Alright, I think we are live. Good, cool. How's it going everybody? Welcome. Um, this is our first time doing this. Right, yeah, we yeah. Are good, cool. cool. <laughs> How's it going everybody? The... Welcome. Oh, we sound there good. We go. yeah. yeah, we sound good. <laughs> Everything's working. Yeah. Looks good. Um, How's it going everybody? The... Welcome. Oh, we sound there good. Yeah. yeah, we sound good. Everything's working. Yeah. Looks good. Um, How's it going everybody? Welcome. Oh, we sound there good. Yeah. yeah, we sound good. Yeah, you can... Oh, yeah, go for it. Close that. Sorry about that. <laughs> Second the time we were watching ourselves. Yeah, that was wild. Um, why don't you introduce yourself? Sure, yeah. Um, so for those who don't know, my name is Tim. Uh, I work at the NCSU Libraries. I bounce back and forth between Hill and Hunt, um, but I oversee like the digital media spaces, um, help foster learning for digital media production, um, audio production, video production, photography, graphic design, etc. Um, I've done a couple streams on here already, so it's nice to be back and with my colleague. Feel free to introduce yourself. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Alex. I am student success librarian. I've worked with digital media, Tim, Jason, all the folks in the digital media lab, Kyle. Um, a lot of the students down there are super great. We've done some really cool workshops. I host a DJ workshop every once in a while that you can catch on our website to sign up. And yeah, we just wanted to do a wellness stream um, for exam week that can help you chill, mellow out a little bit. Hello to our moderator. And today we're just going to be playing around with some lo-fi. We're going to make some lo-fi beats um, using some samples, using some sounds, and the program called Ableton, which you have access to in our digital media lab. Will have access to. Will have I access I think to. we're still working on licensing, um, but we hope to have that kind of straightened away especially for like the spring semester um so feel free to reach out to me or jason um and we can provide updates on ableton's availability um in our digital media spaces what what softwares do they have access that they could good do stuff point like this? yeah so right now um garage band logic pro the both of the apple um licensed softwares we do have available audacity especially for what we're doing today um you know obviously like as you get more expensive, like digital audio workstations is what they're called. Um, there's like more that you can do with it. Um, but I think for the purposes of like what I'll demonstrate today, um, it really is just kind of like arranging um, and finding different pieces of a composition that you like and reorganizing them to create a different musical idea, which you can really do in um, any audio production software. So I would say if this is stuff that you're interested in, keep an eye out um, for updates on Ableton, um, but you should be able to achieve this in Logic Pro, um, maybe in GarageBand and Audacity, but Logic Pro for sure, which we do have available. Nice. And if you're interested in this stuff, but you've never started before, or it's all sounding like a different language, you can always set up a tech consult with our digital media experts, and they will start you in the right direction. Um, I've using it for photography i've used it for learning how to play around in podcast so it's really it's a really great helpful tool and it just introduces you to the space and the people that work there um, i want to give uh, a quick plug for our other wellness events that are happening this week there's some stuff going on in our visualization center we have a bunch of events on our homepage. we're going to be playing music outside of dh hill library tomorrow on thursday we have a mario kart stream and we're just doing this to help you during finals. It can be a very stressful time, so don't forget to take that time for yourself. Nice. And um, thank you, moderator, for plugging some of the uh, library resources that we have available on our website. Um, so one link that we have is lib.ntsu.edu slash do slash audio. You can see the Make Media team here. Um, one thing that we'll kind of demo in this um, stream is that we have a sound effects library um, that just has a, a compilation of a bunch of free um, sound effects that you can use. Um, this is helpful for if you're doing like video production and you need like certain um, sounds to reemphasize like what's happening in the video. If you're working on audio production as well, um, you can incorporate different things to give your um, musical composition a little bit more excitement. Um, so yeah, this is a really cool tool. Um, I honestly forgot we had it. I think <laughs> yeah. you, you had brought it to my attention. I was looking for sounds <laughs> earlier today that we could use in this stream, and it actually reminded me of how expansive it is. If you just look at sound effects in our search bar, it'll usually bring it up in best search at the top, and then you sign in with your Unity ID. And the great thing about this is you can listen to the sounds. You want to hit play on one of the sounds? Oh. 
that these are bulky. Those bulky <laughs> sounds. So you have access to all these sounds. You can listen to them. That was a cool sound. Yeah. And then you can download them, and then you can add them to your podcast, your projects, all kinds of different things. So with Lo-Fi, um, they love to use like the record scratching, the little static in the background from FM radio. They like to use what else? Like rain. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, crowd noises, walking through a train station. You have access to all of that through this library, and you can just download them straight to your desktop and put them into your whatever program that you're using. For sure. Um, here's just like a quick wiki page about Lo-Fi. Lo-Fi essentially, oh. <laughs> um, it stands for low fidelity, which I don't think either of us are like super knowledgeable of like, you know, high tech music terms or anything. But essentially what that means is, um, music has like a certain quality. Um, people that like really enjoy high quality music. Um, get like stereo systems that produce high fidelity or just high musical accuracy. Um, so lo-fi is almost like an artistic, intentional um, direction away from that, kind of like stripping back some of the um, high quality aspects of music. Um, some of these things include like the frequencies that you might hear in like a radio song, um, maybe actually taken out in like lo-fi songs to create like a dreamier, maybe more relaxed um, feel to, to the song itself. So if you've ever been on YouTube and used like the uh, 24 hour lo-fi stream, it's, I think it's got the girl writing. Yep. Um, <laughs> Anime photos, <laughs> rain, yeah. and... We'll plug that in there. Should, yeah. <laughs> um, that, that kind of gives you an example of like um, how lo-fi can be manipulated. People will typically take um, samples of songs, typically jazz songs, because they have like already such a dreamy um, essence to them maybe remove some of the higher frequencies so it sounds a little bit more subdued and then add like drum beats and stuff like that to give it a completely different um, feel to it. Um, so we'll try to capture some of that today, go through like the terminology as well as how some of those things kind of play out when you're actually working um, in a digital audio workstation. Yeah, I really like lo-fi because it's one, it's more accessible if you want to make it. There's just less rules and less like technical things that you have to go through. It's more of like a feeling that you're trying to capture or just like being able to, they're great for taking a walk, studying yeah. something in the background. It doesn't necessarily, you doesn't have to require your full attention, right. exactly. which is really cool. And I've seen people like Ninth Wonder and people on Twitter and like the sound space ask like, what's the difference between what people were doing back in the day with early hip hop, like Q-Tip, J Dilla, Mad Lib, Ninth Wonder. And what's the difference between that and lo-fi? And is lo-fi like discrediting what they did so far, like long ago, because it's so popular sure. today? But I don't think, I think the, that argument is missing the point because I think lo-fi, it's just, it's more, it's a feeling. So a lot of people, most people can't find that split second sample, chop it up in a way that Jay Dilla could do or Q-Tip right. could do to make a song that's just so technically advanced and sound that... 20, 30 years later, it sounds still like right, it did. Yeah. Uh, like it's still brand new. Yeah. But for just regular folks or people who are just getting into music, you can take a, a sample, put some drums behind it, put that ambient, like static -y sound, bring down the, the, the re bring up the reverb and the ambience, and then you have a song that you produced, um, and it kind of gives you the same feeling, but it's not necessarily in the same box. Um, and the, but that's not a bad thing. You right. know, maybe Playboy Cardi can't rhyme like Eminem, <laughs> but he gives yeah. you something different that sure. Eminem can't give you. Yeah. Um, and that's not to say that one's worse than the other. I think that that's when we get into these like silly little arguments. It's just different. Yeah. And um, so use it for what you will and have fun with it yeah. is, is what I'd say. No, that's a great point. And I think even within genres themselves, as you were kind of touching on, like there's so many different subgenres and things kind of blurring the lines. You know, you may have a perception of what a lo-fi song sounds like, and then here's something that you're like, oh, this kind of sounds like what I thought it was, but it's it's blurring those lines a little bit. So um, I think that's what makes it interesting. I think that's what kind of, like, takes the rules out of it. Um, and it, it kind of just, like, helps you learn to trust what you like to hear and kind of follow that as much as you can. Um, we may not create a perfect beat today, but, you know, yeah. we're just going to give it a shot and trust our ears. Definitely. Um, so I think we're ultimately just trying to get that across and kind of introduce those who aren't familiar um, to lo-fi as a genre and, and kind of our take on it today. Um, so let's hop into Ableton. Um, should we say the song that we're using? 
We'll say we have a sample hey. <laughs> from uh, Miles Davis and John Coltrane. Some of you might be aware of it. It's been used in other hip hop songs before. Um, I sent Tim a folder full of sounds and songs that we could use to chop up. He hasn't played with it. I sent it at, what, 1030 this yeah. morning and it's <laughs> noon. So you haven't played with it at all, if, um, if not very yeah. much. So why don't you introduce them a little bit into Ableton and sure, what, yeah. what that is. Um, so Ableton, I've kind of already started a little bit here, but to backtrack, um, when you open Ableton, it has two views um, that you can toggle using either these two um, buttons up at the top right corner um, or the tab key on your computer. And if you hover over them, it tells you one is the um, session view selector and one is the arrangement view selector. The arrangement view looks similar to like Audacity and Logic Pro and all of these other um, DAWs that people typically work in. Um, so for the sake of like continuity and ease, we'll probably just stick in this um, view uh, selector for right now. Um, all I've essentially done in done thus far is um, dragged in our um, audio sample that we have downloaded, and I can play a little bit of it here. <laughs> I love that sample. Yeah. Also, I think we're having some webcam difficulties. Um, give us one second. Tim's going to keep on playing with it. I'll play around with the webcam. Um, but if not, just listen to our soothe, yeah. smooth, <laughs> soulful voices. All right. So at least it, I think you can still see what's on um, the workflow. So we'll try to just keep going from there. Um, so kind of how I like to approach a sample is when I've dropped it into Ableton or any DAW, I kind of just click around and see what I can hear, you know, just at random. If, if, if there's a beat that I can hear, if it starts somewhere and I'm like, oh, this one section sounds interesting, I might just like keep clicking it over and over um, and playing it until I hear something out of it. For example, like, I think that sounds pretty good. Um, and there's like a couple different approaches to making um, beats. Um, I feel like there's chops where you can kind of like integrate different parts of a song. Um, oh, I think we're back. Thank you so much, Thank Claire. Thank you, Claire. <laughs> um, there's chops where you can kind of like find different parts of a song and reintegrate them together to create a musical idea that was kind of hidden within the song itself. Um, there's like websites or like uh, accounts that will like show different artists over the years that have like done that. I think Daft Punk is like a common artist where you can, they'll play out the entire waveform and then you can see like the two, three seconds of an entire like four minute song that they chose to rearrange and yeah, yeah, yeah. make an entirely new song out of, which is yeah. pretty cool. That's been a big trend on social media is showing people's flips that they've used. Yeah. And some of the your favorite songs by Kanye West or whatever, they're super fast songs that they slow down the pitch. Right, yeah. Uh, and sometimes they take a whole eight bars and you're like, eh, they didn't do too much to that. Right. But sometimes, like you just mentioned, the split second yeah. of the sound from one song combined with a, another song and then they add their own twist. So if people ever say that sampling isn't like difficult or part like, then everybody would be able to do it right. and everybody would be a super producer. Exactly. But that ear and that ability to capture that sound, like I love that you skip past the piano part mm -hmm. in the beginning, which seems like the easiest to sample. Sure. It's been sampled before and found that like, yeah, like this one, you could add some drums, we'd have a lo-fi beat in two seconds. Right. We might bring that back later for the middle, but you're trying to find that horn mm -hmm. that like play off of that, to play off of that, which is really cool. Yeah. And that's the other thing, like you may not hear something in first listen, um, but as Alex was mentioning, like you can definitely manipulate sounds. Let me try to, I'll just take a section of this song. And if I double click on it, Ableton gives me some like other parameters. Again, these are things that you can, um, some of them you can use in other uh, digital audio workstations as well. There's this transpose tool where if I adjust it, it will bring up the audio up or down a semitone. A semitone just kind of means like um, 
more or less the pitch of it. So for example, I can play the audio at its normal pitch. And then I can drag it up a semitone. Oh, that's cool. Maybe another. Could be really dramatic. And it starts to distort after a while because it's losing the true character, um, which for some samples can end up working really well. Um, but I think for this one, it will probably stay within a one to two range. Let me try going lower and see. Definitely has a more kind of melancholy, yeah. yeah, more melancholy vibe to it. And because this sample, Ableton has a feature called Warp, which is unique to Ableton, but essentially when you drop in a sample, it will align with the um, time signature and um, BPM that uh, Ableton has already set in. So if we were to turn this up, oh, that's cool. it's, it's like at a much faster pace now. Um, so you can experiment with that as well. I think I did prefer it a bit slower. Let's, like let's nice, start with there then. Nice yeah. yeah, I like that. And for all of you out there, Tim's been playing around with Ableton for about four to five years. And one thing in library world we like to talk about is literacy. So there's information literacy when you're trying to find sources for your paper. There's digital literacy when you're learning how to use like iMovie, Photoshop, Illustrator. Just your ability to navigate these different software. They can look confusing and they, a lot of times they are because they're so powerful. They can, there's a lot of tools within them. But you just take it one day at a time and your skills will get better over time. Um, the more that you practice with yeah. it. Yeah, and, and I, I would take a moment to plug that um, although we're not branded as a um, music production school, we have a lot of different um, kind of avenues for it. Let me see. I think um, NCSU has a page where you can look up different courses, cl uh, the course catalog, I was trying to remember the name. Um, and I think the class, I, I had no real prior um, music production experience actually until coming to state. Um, so that was really helpful to like learn here and be able to develop that. Uh, the class that I took was MUS, uh, I believe it was 270, but let me see if I can get this to search. Undergraduate. So would your homework be like, make something? Yeah, I mean, he, he would start us off pretty um, pretty simplistic. Uh, we actually started in Ableton. Um, so I think that made it easier to kind of get acclimated with it because it was the first thing that I could like get my hands on. So we, we had started on Ableton and then moved to Logic and then other um, softwares. But Ableton was the first thing I could wrap my brain around yeah. um, because we started on it first, so it's just what I've gravitated to. Uh, here it is. It's songwriting using digital audio workstations, MES270. It's usually offered in fall and spring. Um, I, I would definitely recommend this course. Uh, it helped me kind of like get a lot of the basics in, and then I could kind of like fuel my interests using the library's resources, um, meeting people on campus, that kind of thing. Um, so if this is stuff that you're interested in, we definitely have avenues to like develop those skills more yeah check out our music department like you said we don't have a major in it so maybe people don't talk about it as much but if you just need some election elective credits um that's a great way especially if you're if you always thought about doing stuff like this right yeah um so yeah let's revisit that you we kind of played through this we pitched it down i pitched out uh two semitones so it's definitely more melancholic than the original uh pitch that it was in so let's work with that negative two semitone. And I think you liked that part. Um, so let's zoom in and kind of see. So the waveform gives us a lot of information. Um, it tells us exactly like what's happening, where a beat is starting, ending, etc. We can see all of these different uh, hits, um, which we can take and, and um, 
kind of recontextualize those as well. But let's start with what you gravitated to. And I like to just zoom in and make sure I get like super accurate with where it's starting. Mm. I want to make a loop out of just that. I think that sounds great. Um, so there's a couple ways you can, what it's called splitting a clip. Um, because if I drag this whole thing now, it, it kind of uh, reacts to the entire clip, but I just want this section. Um, so I can right click and hit split. There's also a shortcut um, command E. So I will split it again. And one thing that's great is once you learn one DAW, Digital Audio Workstation, you kind of have the tools to transfer that over to others because that's really similar to GarageBand right. and Logic where it's command T to split exactly, a clip yeah. and then you can reposition it, take it out and everything. So it's really cool. So what I'm doing now is I essentially just copied that um, little section that we had. And I kind of want to get it by itself and try to manipulate it in a way to where I can make it um, loopable. Um, and basically what I mean by that is when I play this clip over and over again, I want it to sound seamlessly um, repetitive. <laughs> So it's almost there, but there's a little like timing issue. Um, I think it comes in a little too fast. So let's see what we can do. Is that like the fun and the headache of working with jazz? Definitely, and, like, live yeah. Instrumentation yeah. with with pre-programmed loops. Right. You have it perfect, like four, one, two, three, exactly. four, one, two, three, four. But with live instrumentation, it's going to change. It's going to be a little movement, bit different. There's movement. There's, yeah. Might um, be like a split second that's off. Exactly. So does that make it more, f I guess you have more control of what you can do, but it I think a little more effort. Yeah, I, I definitely think because Ableton has this warp feature, that makes it a little bit easier to really dial in the timing. Mm -hmm. um, but again, it's not impossible. And, and often other people use different softwares to um, create loops. And there's a whole bunch of methods to like, do chops and stuff like that. Um, so this is just kind of my quick and dirty way of approaching it. But there's yeah. definitely um, a lot of other ways to like approach it, whether using like physical hardware instruments. Yeah. Um, like what do we? We have the SP four hundred fours, which I think do like uh, audio manipulation to where you can like get the chops exactly how you want them before you're even working with them. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is just kind of like using the computer alone. No, I have um, a, a MIDI keyboard here, but I'll stay away from it for now just to kind of show what what you can do just using your computer yeah um so let's see and if i turn on the metronome which is this button right here let me see how it's paced three, four, one, two, three. so yeah kind of how you were mentioning about jazz like the pacing gets a little off and it's hard to like get it right on the beat. Let me see. You call this jazz. <laughs> Where was that from? I had no oh idea. Oh my gosh, that sounds so funny. That's familiar. just so funny though. <laughs> mm, still not quite there. Let's see. And all I'm doing is just creating more space from the waveform that's repeating again to see if we can get it to loop. Mm -hmm. uh, seamlessly. Have you noticed your ear get better over time? I think so. Pick it up? I yeah. think so. That sounds that a little bit better. Good. Yeah. out just a little bit so we have it fully even are the different colors the different color of gray is that different measures yeah essentially yeah. um so it's counting in four four right now so mm -hmm. um one like uh measure is like 
slightly gray from like a or slightly more gray than like another measure just to like give you differentiate it mm -hmm, exactly cool. yeah um so let's see what we can do step your bars up son yeah. <laughs> um so there's a couple ways we could go from here i guess i'll just show like explain kind of what i was talking about earlier with like the manipulating uh the frequencies um so that process is called eqing um EQing essentially just means there's low frequencies, which is like where you get your bass, um, your kick drums, um, any like deep uh, brass instruments, that's that's where your bass frequencies are going to lie. Mm -hmm. Your mid-range frequencies, which is like piano, guitar, usually vocals, um, that kind of stuff. And then higher frequency where you usually get like cymbals, hi-hats, um, I guess other other things too yeah triangles um, yeah triangles chimes um, exactly like things that sound <laughs> a little bit more high end and fluttery yeah. um would you say lo-fi uses the the bass frequency more uh like yeah i would the... say a, a common trope of like standard lo-fi music is removing a lot of those higher frequencies again just to convey that like dreamier effect yeah almost like when you're falling asleep sound starts to um you start to hear less and less as you're drifting off into sleep. So I think it's kind of meant to emulate that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just throwing on this EQ3, which has the low channel, the mid channel, and the high channel. Um, just like a DJ control. Exactly. Yeah. So if I play through it, I'll just click on and off so you can see what it's doing. So if I turn off all the lows, that bass sound, the, the cello goes away. Yeah. If I turn off the highs, the cymbal is really distant. Even some of the, um, is that a trumpet? I think, yeah. um, some of those frequencies get cut. If I turn the mids off, Whoa, all, of the, cool. yeah, all of the piano, a lot of the trumpet sound is, is um, kind of taken out. So you can really see just from this tool alone, like, you can play around. Can, exactly. Yeah. This sounds like you're outside of a house party, like trying to talk to someone. Yeah. And all the sounds like. And that, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> On a summer night. Right. More cars driving by. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's cool. So with the DJ controller, which we check out at the Ask Us desk. Mm -hmm. Plug. <laughs> <laughs> um, you have those same functions, but mm -hmm. because it's just a DJ controller, it's not as solid sure, it's not yeah. as strong mm -hmm. so i imagine with the idea because that's what one of the strong tools right it really isolates the, right. the lower notes exactly. the middle notes and the high notes yeah. and it made it totally different is this usually the workflow where you play with the sample first and then build around the sample? definitely yeah, yeah. i think once i hear something that like my ear can gravitate to i kind of just start to go from there so here is really I kind of demoed it first, but here is where I would like mess with the semitones and see like what do I like, what's sounding good, um, what do I want to kind of take out. When you hear something over and over again, you start to develop more of an attachment to it. Yeah. Um, so I think that makes it easier to like pick out. Okay, well I really like that trumpet sound, but maybe if I really want to like convey the lo-fi um, aspect, I might take out some of these highs. So. I kind of demoed it a little more dramatically earlier of like turning off the highs entirely. Yeah. But you can also dial it back. You don't have to be subtly, one yeah. or the other. Yeah. So I kind of like where that's at. That feels a little more. It does sound dreamy. Dreamy, yeah. yeah. And I might turn down the bass a little bit. Just so, so it's like, not too heavy. Exactly. Because we're going to be able to add our own sounds to exactly. it afterwards, right? It's kind of like, um, I don't have a perfect analogy for it, but... Um, <laughs> Be a whole lot cooler. Yeah. <laughs> I guess like food on a plate or something. Like you you only have the plate just as you only have like a range of frequencies. So even though it feels infinite... Ooh, I like that. Yeah, I like that. you can't really like yeah. jam everything because things will start to sound muddy. Things yeah. will be clashing. You, you want to allow enough space on the plate to have the frequencies you want. So if you want to add your own drums, it doesn't make sense to have the base of the sample that you're using overpowering it before you can even add your own yeah, yeah, yeah. things to it. You yeah. can't have four entrees exactly. and no appetizer exactly. or dessert. Yeah. Like we, this might be our main course with the sample, but we're going to add Need the other room. stuff to yeah. it. Yeah. So I like where that's sounding. Let's see some of these um, 
effects that you sent me. Oh. This could give us like bus stop. Yeah. Cold rainy day vibe. And which is which is a classic of yeah. the lo-fi. <laughs> <laughs> the lo-fi Definitely. that we're talking about, that lo-fi genre. And these were sounds that I just found from the sound effect library earlier today. I wanted to find some ambient sounds. Ooh, we could also rain? the rain. Yeah. yeah. I think this is like one? rain specifically in Japan. Oh, wow. <laughs> and rain and jazz. I mean, if you haven't dived yeah. into the jazz genre, rain and jazz yeah. just goes hand in yeah. hand like tea and crumpets. Let, let's, let's, <laughs> let's go for the Let's, the let's just do it. Room. Yeah, let's yeah. go all the way lo-fi. So I'm just dragging this in. Takes a second to load. Can you record a sample? You can. Because um, um, another thing I want to do is just find like an anime clip from yeah. YouTube and then play it in. So it's kind of distorted as well. I'm trying to think of the easiest way to do that. Um, or could you grab it from your computer? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, or we could also, yeah, so. We don't have to do it now. Sure. I'm just wondering we'll, if we have we'll that, dive that back into that. Okay, one. yeah. Let me know um, when you want to get back to that one. So now we've got two audio channels, and if you just overlay them, they're playing at the same time. And already, yeah. That's a little bit sorry right already. there. You just leave it. You All right, we're out. Yeah. We love the finals. <laughs> you can uh, solo them, so you can hear just what's happening here. You can hear just what's happening here. Yeah. And have them both playing. Yep. So that, yeah, I mean, the whole feeling of that is is conveyed it's already. there yeah you had to say goodbye mm -hmm. to your partner who's going to study right. abroad yep. and you dropped her off at the yep. train station and it's raining yep. and you got to go home by yourself but you're happy for her right she's trying to <laughs> <laughs> clearly you've been through <laughs> scenario yeah. yeah in three months you'll be able to, yeah, i'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> <That's okay>. sorry. <laughs> um so here's what i want to do just looking at the waveforms we can kind of see the swelling is really happening here and like the thunder so the waveforms are a little bit yeah darker and then it kind of teeters off a little bit so i kind of want to make it a little more uniform so what i'm going to do is just highlight the parts that are a little bit louder use the shortcut from earlier command e and then you have a specific clip that you can manipulate um, and toggle through so anything i do to this clip is only affecting this there's a volume yeah. slider here so i'm just going to turn that down and you can visually see it um, like the waveform's getting smaller as I turn it down. So yeah. I'm going to try to make it even to what's on this section. Because the song's not that. rain. So right. You just want the rain. The ambience there. of yeah. it, yeah. And that, yeah. And this is where like you really get to express yourself because right. if you wanted the thunder to be loud in the right. beginning or like in the interlude in the middle you could bring that mm -hmm. up like there's so many it's up to you however right. you want to express Definitely. yourself uh, that's sounding really nice and let me also so we don't have to keep um, looping it. So Ableton has this like loop bar that's usually at the beginning of the session project, but you can drag it all the way to where you would like it. Oh, okay. Um, my workflow is a little bit messy, so. Oh wait, I, I like this is like your canvas pretty much, right? right this is yeah. your your picture and Illustrator, exactly. however big you want it. Interesting. My workflow, I I can't have things like floating around, so I'll usually start from bar one yeah. and delete everything around it and go from there. But Smart. I do kind of like this, like you keep everything that way if you want to come back to exactly. something. Exactly. Yeah. Grab it. Yeah. yeah. I, I makes sense. try to have like little ideas elsewhere if it if it ends up fitting into the bigger picture, mm -hmm. then that's great. If not, then you know. Yeah, and you have unlimited scroll. Yeah, exactly. Right? So yeah. You can, it, it you can quite just literally place is. things everywhere. Cool. Um, so once you drag the arrow margins to, I'm just dragging them to the duration of this um, clip right here. You just select this like loop feature and that like arms it. So when we play through, it should replay. There we go. So we can just kind of keep working. Um, oh, okay. It's just going this back channel. to yeah. yeah. So yeah, already. I mean. Sound good. I'm liking this. Let's see what other sound effects that we have. Maybe we can use some for percussive. Oh yeah, they um, actually in the library. Are you, you looking go back? for? Gosh. Oh, play that one. Okay. Play that one. That one's funny. <laughs> okay. Are you looking for a new love, adventure? Maybe you need some extra money. Mm. 
Well, 1-900-PSYCHIC can guide you to all these answers. Call 1-900-PSYCHIC and get your answer today. Only 4 50 per minute. Yeah. Must be 18 or older. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. Well, let's pin that one. This is we'll come back uh, to it. giving me Cowboy Bebop yeah, vibes. Yeah, yeah. Just like jazzy space. Definitely. And just like, just random. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, they, they did have drums and percussions in the sound effect library. Nice. Um, oh, actually, I... Okay, so here's where I'm <laughs> Yes, Tim's got ideas. Tim's got ideas. See, once we get this production rolling, yeah. this is going to win us an Emmy. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to have like sound effects, yeah. and it's going to be like, Tim's got an idea. So, yeah, I kind of like, given that we're, you know, it's a jazz setting, we're using jazz music. If you listen to a lot of jazz recordings, as soon as people start playing, they, like, start applauding, like, right at the beginning of their playing, and then usually it sustains or it stops until the composition is over and then they applaud again so having that kind of like welcome to yeah, the show yeah, yeah, yeah. live fun. music yeah. i like that um, and so i'm sure you can do this can you fade out the the song exactly. like the sound yes so the shortcut to do that is just hitting the a key really? and then it turns on the automation tool if it doesn't do that that might just mean that this um, midi key is enacted so when I hit A now nothing happens um, but if I turn that off and hit A it should bring up this automation tool um, we're trying to affect the applause channel which is channel 5 so if I hit none uh, my options are just the mixer because that's really the only thing happening and then if I click on this little blue uh, zero represents the volume so Let's say if I turn off the automation for a second. So if I just slid this down, already it's way quieter. But I can uh, go into the automation tool, have the track volume selected, and I can draw out what I want the volume uh, to be. So I just create little points on this red line. Just and I want to have it, yeah, like just before the audio ends. Yeah. And then just before it begins, Coming in, so exactly. Like, yeah. And you can select the entire thing and kind of have the audio a little bit lower. So let's see what that sounds like. Nice. Maybe we can have this run a little longer. Mm -hmm. And you can just drag the points. To where you want them. What's your producer name? Uh, regular decision. Regular decision. Yeah, I so have we could have like on recording of someone being like, "Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> regular, regular decision." decision. <laughs> <Just like. Yeah. laughs> nice. I like that. Okay, let's see. Maybe we'll have a long fade out. Yeah, that's cool. So we can turn off the automation tool, just hitting A again. Um, <laughs> please add that recording without. Yeah, no, we've got to have you introduce that, uh, yes. that tag. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, regular decision. <laughs> okay, so let's get into probably debatably the most fun part, which is the beat. Um, yeah. Do we get to use the MIDI? Yeah, we can. Um, I'm trying to think. There's a couple ways we can do this. I may, for the sake of simplifying, just pick from Ableton's drum sounds. Yeah, that's um, probably a good idea, actually. And kind of see. So if you click, so Ableton has these. I don't know if you can see if the chat's blocking it. It's OK. Um, if you look really closely, Ableton has like a sounds and drums folder. Um, all or like Logic Pro and GarageBand also have their own like sounds and things that you can pick from. If you click on one, kind of previews it. Nice. Yeah, I like know that this is a ideas. huge feature why GarageBand is a, is mm -hmm. a popular one. So Ableton has these as well. Right. There Just like pre-installed. I kind of like this one, actually. It already seems to have like a lo-fi energy to it. If you listen to the hi-hats. Yeah, they're a little bit subdued. Yeah, I think yeah. we could work with this one. Um, so to enact this, I'm just going to um, create, right click on this blank space in the bottom right corner, create MIDI track, um, because these are MIDI um, instruments. 
and then double click, or I can just drag it actually, oops, onto this channel. And then you see this red dot came on, which just means it's armed. Um, so now everything that I'm doing and recording will only affect um, the drum kit channel that we just uh, started. So here's where it can get interesting too. Um, so for the sake of this demonstration, I don't know if you can see, I'm using <laughs> a MIDI controller, which we have available to check out at the library. It literally is just, um, you plug it into the USB in your laptop and then it can uh, essentially turn your keyboard into like a playable instrument, which is really cool. Um, if for whatever reason, uh, thank you for plugging that. If for whatever reason, um, you know, if, if a MIDI keyboard is like too intimidating or if you don't have immediate access to one, um, this is the function that I was mentioning earlier that's useful. So this piano key button in the top right corner. Um, so when I hit A before to trigger the automation, it didn't work if this was on. That's because it turns your actual computer keyboard into a um, MIDI channel. So let me see if I can, oh. That one thing about Ableton that is kind of confusing. Um, so you can see when I tap the keys on my keyboard, it triggers this empty channel, but not where I need it to. I think there's a way to, This is where my knowledge of Ableton um, deteriorates. So <laughs> I'll skip it, but the yeah, there's definitely a way to essentially like um, have the keys on your keyboard become like these sounds right here. Um, yeah. Keyboard I, meaning your computer keyboard? My computer keyboard, gotcha. yeah, sorry. I gotcha. need to distinguish. Um, but if you have a MIDI controller, then um, the keys on that should work just fine. Yeah. Um, so let's try to find the, yeah, we want the hi-hat, the snare, and the kick. And then we'll just kind of play through, and I'm literally just playing this out. Um, so this is from that loop that you chose. It gives you the, the sound what do you that mean? you can transfer into your keyboard. The loop that you liked? Oh, yes. Or is this different? Yeah. yeah, so th yeah, these are all of Ableton's like pre recorded drum sets. Yeah. And when I enact one, these are all from Now that you can take that exactly, drum set and yeah. play, it, play mm -hmm. around with it. Okay. So let's play our loop. A lot of swing in this one, so I think yeah. it's yeah. Do you have knowledge, prior knowledge of drumming experience? No, none. No? <laughs> that, they always say, like, drummers obviously make, you know, mm -hmm. for a good entryway into yeah. producing. But I think you pick up on it as well. And Definitely. finger drumming is totally different. Oh, yeah. Like drumming, drumming. Stro Elliott, if you're interested in finger drumming. He's Plug. insane. We'll have animations or like. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I think when, especially when the sample is a little bit wonky, it's nice to have like a grounding sound and that can either be like a hi-hat or a kick. So let's try doing that. And are you just freestyling right now? Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm literally just... Uh, and is it recording or are you just getting a Yeah, so it? right now it's armed, so that means anything that I enact on the keyboard, it's reading from this channel. Mm. Um, if I hit record up at the top here, it'll count me out. Now it's recording. Yeah. Yeah. You play around with it first and then.
So me and my little brother got mm-hmm. to this point in our producing career, and then we could never get our what we were playing mm. to really match. Mm. Is there a way to automatically do that in Ableton, or do you just have to get better at your time? Um, there is. There's a tool called Quantize um, where you could essentially highlight all of these notes, um, and then if you right-click, you can uh, quantize it, and it snaps it to the grid. Grid. Um, Do you like it when it snaps it to the grid, or do you like... Depends. Um, Even if it's imperfect. Because imperfectness is what makes music remember. I think think in this context it does actually work, because it is still on beat with the song, Mm. and I want it to have some structure. Um, And again, this was only the hi-hats that we recorded, so you can have let's say the hi-hat snapped, quote-unquote snapped to the grid, um, but then maybe like the kicks or snares a little bit more um, timed from your own Mm -hmm. playing, and that can kind of give it a more realistic feel. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, to kind of back up a little bit, because I think we kind of just got into it. Um, So when I recorded it, it gave me these like MIDI notes. So it's not quite like an audio channel where I'm getting waveforms. It's giving me like little chunks of like data that's showing me what I played and I can play it back and it's showing me like every sound that's happening so the great thing about MIDI is that you can kind of um, rework it even after you've recorded it so even though I played this note I could move it all the way earlier <laughs> you know like it, you it, it wherever exactly you want. Yeah. Um, I can duplicate it um, so let's say I didn't have a note here. That's too early. And with the color code, you can kind of see where they all fit, exactly. right? And so you can just play these things and then record it. But once you've recorded it after, if you highlight all the notes, this is what Alex um, was explaining. There's a feature called Quantize, which other uh, DAWs have this as well. Logic Pro definitely has this. Um, But when you quantize it, it snaps it to make sure that it's in time. So we don't have to, like, leave it to guesswork. We know that it's exactly in time. Keep moving each individual one slightly over. Coming for you, Norm. <laughs> in the chat, they asked, what was it that made it in time again? Quantum? Quantize. Uh, Quantize. Which you pull up um, from going into the actual piano roll of the clip that you recorded. And you can highlight all. And then... Um, Quantize it. Q-U-A-N-T-I-Z-E. Quantize. Pretty useful feature, for sure, especially starting out. And the other thing is I don't have to, um, with MIDI, I don't have to necessarily record everything I play. So if we like that um, ride symbol, it'll show me where I'm playing it, and I can mm-hmm. literally just draw in ah, put them where exactly. I want. Exactly. Nice. Um, so I want it to line up with this one. And then also, you can see these like little red dots at the bottom. Mm-hmm. Uh, this affects the velocity, so the higher up it is, the harder the note is um, being played. Mm-hmm. If you turn it down, huh. it gets a lot softer. So I'll just add that every 
simple measurement. <laughs> Do you ever need to just like take a 15 minute break? And definitely, yeah. definitely, yeah. Especially when you hear something so repetitive over and over. Um, <laughs> it's hard to kind of get into it. Um, and sometimes it, it is better just to like capitalize off the feeling and like what you're hearing in the moment. But mm -hmm. yeah, if, if it starts to like grind Lose your gears, yeah, yeah, definitely take a break, come back to it and you'd be surprised like how the different things that you pick up on that you wouldn't when you were so involved in it. Yeah. Um, I imagine the art of producing is a balance between taking a break, but also coming back and making sure you right, finish it exactly. before two months has gone by and you have a whole bunch of like exactly. unfinished projects. Yeah. Right? Like, chat they said taking a break is based in psychology it resets your thinking and how you're approaching the project or problem it is scientifically proven Definitely. please take breaks take a break <laughs> Making sure to hit these like super light. Yeah. Instead of, you know, um, to kind of like keep it in, in the feel of like the song. Yeah. Um, so there's a couple ways you can do this. Me personally, I think just for the sake of demoing, and then also sometimes it's easier to have my ideas a little bit separate. I could draw these in, but I think what I'll do first is just duplicate this channel. Um, delete what um. So it just essentially duplicated the symbols. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to delete that, but I still have this um, kit up, so I'm going to arm the second channel. With your drums. And then do the, the um, kick and snare in this channel. Yeah. Let's see. we quantize it let's see what it does so this is everything we played I'm just gonna highlight it all Oops. <laughs> and then right click quantize and let's see what that did for us Sometimes quantize isn't perfect. Um, you can always go into your quantize settings. Quantize essentially just means um, it straightens it out. It like snaps things. Um, so if you see all these lines here, let me let me back up a second. Um, all of these little like notations, like fourteen point three, three three, fourteen point four. 
these are all like beats within a 4-4 um, pattern. So where if I played a note and it may have been like kind of in between um, these like two notations, um, sometimes that works and sometimes you want it to like snap onto the uh, a, a grid line. Um, so quantize basically just snaps it to the closest grid line which may not always be accurate, but for the most part, you can kind of like adjust. Yeah, that's a great point. It is like auto-tune for timing, essentially. Um, so you don't have to play something perfect in MIDI. It can kind of um, recognize what you were trying to do or the beats that you were trying to like get it onto um, and then uh, relocate the note. Um, so let me back up. Let me, I'm just undoing. So this is before I quantized it. So sometimes that didn't sound half bad. Yeah, sometimes when I um, am recording like this, I'll just try to find like a section, like an even section where I kind of it kind of tied together and maybe just loop that part. Loop that part like that first, yeah. So let's see. Our sample starts on that first of the horn section. So let's try to find a part where we started there. I love this style of music because it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't, like, yeah. You can mix, mix and match it, your kicks, your snares, however you want. So I'm going to take that section and let's see if I bring it to the front. Let's start from the beat. And this is where, you, yeah, you can kind of fine tune it. So I might want like a double kick here. So I'm just going to highlight it. And Command D is the shortcut to duplicate it. Okay. where it gets tricky that's where it gets <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah but you can move these notes exactly to make it work right? yeah so let me try copying this so, so we're starting let's try doing that close maybe more this one Right. Yeah, you can kind of see yeah. we want these to line up. So let's try that. Maybe a little bit forward. And we can see, so let's see. Yeah. quantizing because we can hear points where it's like kind of in and out which is a stylistic like you were mentioning like Dilla earlier like um, people have kind of like turned that into like essentially not auto-tuning the timing of the beats and like having them sway a little bit mm -hmm. um, which done like strategically or like um, like well thought out can really like convey a, a cool sound um, but I think for this we may want it a little more structured so yeah. I'm gonna you're unintentionally intentionally doing it. Right. But you also just don't want it to just be off. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So let's see what quantizing does for us here. 
So some of these, and this is where it gets kind of just dragging them. For the sake of this one, I may just re-record it. And let me see. Yeah, it kind of starts. Maybe I want it. I Come in a little bit later. Okay, so that that'll be my reference point. That first. Yeah. And if you don't want to lose something, again, you can always duplicate it. And then another cool shortcut is if you just hit the zero key. Uh, the clip is still there, but it kind of like deactivates it. Um, so I want to try re-recording. But I still want to have this here as like a reference. Let's see. And now I know where I want to start. Gotcha. Okay. So I'm going to deactivate that. Find my keys. Let's see. Oh, and then we have to arm it on the right one, otherwise we'll just record it for that. <laughs> <laughs> Over something else. Yeah. part so <laughs> that's why I was doubling but let's see how this goes. First, like see. four or five, yeah, hours sound really good. So I'm just gonna separate this one by itself and just drag it. <laughs> just bring that over there. Uh, actually, let's look at this one. And I'll just drag it to where it's matching. Let's play that back. So I'm just splitting them so I don't manipulate everything. And then zooming in so I can get them to line up. And again, there's like easier methods to this. Again, like sampling kind of requires you to like fine tune a little bit more, whereas mm -hmm. like something that's a little bit more structured can kind of be. In Invented this program. I know. Is a genius. I know. 
who makes Ableton? That sounds sweet. Yeah. And then from this point, we can kind of like fine tune. So I'm adding another EQ3 onto the just the hi hat channel. I can solo it. I kind of want to cut out some of those highs again for that, like, yeah. Take them mm -hmm. down a little bit. Take them down a notch. Mm -hmm. So Ableton is a German music software company from Berlin. Oh. And they make hardware like the Ableton Push, which mm -hmm. I think we have a couple of. Yeah. And they'd be cool people to work for. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. So this blue a zero again like messes with the volume, so I might turn down the volume of the kick and snare a little. record that yeah. one. <laughs> Actually, if I bring back up the automation, turn up the volume a little more so yeah, it doesn't get too. to make a series of yeah. us just making a song yeah yeah that's it so i mean and kind of like you were saying I mean, this this is one vignette this is one idea we could loop this and this could just be you know uh, what one minute lo-fi beat which is uh, again the other beauty of it like a lot of lo-fi songs vary in yeah um, no rules yeah like some songs really are just like a couple you know not even a full minute sometimes um so that's a really cool part and then we still have like so I picked up um, like different parts of the original sample. And there's so much, I mean, yeah, there's so much of this. <laughs> we picked like three seconds. I would, yeah, this was one that I had earlier. Ooh, that, that first, na, 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 na. that's like jazzy basement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, na, 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 yeah. Na, na, na. This one's more like, I got like Pink Panther vibes. Yeah. yeah. 
And then there's, what, there's another section of the song. I like this part, you know. Let's see. I might just take that. Let's see if we can run with another idea real quick. Um, we don't need all of this room. <laughs> cool. So let's see what we can do with this. Should we start new? Yeah, I, let's I, do I, it. Let's let's just see what this idea can spring out. So I want to start. Yeah, I think that'll be on tempo a little bit easier and it'll give us like a That's so wild. It's the same song. I know. Totally different totally swing. Different. Exactly. Yeah. Let's see. I might see if I can bring the beginning to the end. What that mm. might do. Let's see what that does for the thing. Kind of. A little bit. Yeah. Let's see. And this is also where like the warp feature is helpful too. Mm -hmm. Let's see um, if we just play the metronome. Can we extend that part? I feel like we're cutting off in the middle of a little riff. Yeah, let's see. The, at the end. But then it's hard to know when you want to mm. end it, huh? I could loop there. Yeah. That full movement. Let me see what this will do. And sometimes it might be easier even to turn the warp feature off just to hear what the original thing is doing. Mm. See if we can what we can do with that. Um, I'm gonna drag it. to see what this will do. That speed it up. I'm I not took that whole that. section and condensed it into two bars, so it should loop. It's got more bounce. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. I think that's what I was trying to figure out how to do earlier. <laughs> from and we part. got a bit. Yeah. And then you could play with the EQ mm -hmm. if you wanted to, right? 
Yeah, exactly. As it speed up, speed it up. And now we're on. Mm. I'm going to toggle for a second to the session view, which is Ableton's like exclusive view, and just kind of demo that for a little bit. So you can see all of the same channels corresponding. Um, you can see the levels coming out of like the sample channel that we have. This is our drum channel um, that I just moved up. So it's all the same thing, but if you double click on any of these like one things, um, or scenes I think they're called, you get like the piano roll. <coughs> It's like so all the same stuff. Is this essentially your mixing board? If kind you were of, to have yeah. like a giant mixing board, this would be the board view. Exactly. And within the board view, you can create like essentially all of these act as like little loops um, that we can trigger between. So I could have an idea here, an idea here, an mm -hmm. idea here. Um, so let's see. Let's try to. I'm just going to draw stuff out. Let's see. And again, the gray areas you mentioned, so this is like the one of every beat, mm -hmm. which snares and kicks usually go in the one. So if I play this out. It's kind of cool like with samples especially like we've got obviously like you know what's going on here let me turn the metronome off but then we've also got these little accents that are still left in the sample yeah so there's like a little snare hit that you know just ever so slightly like that kind of gives it more character yeah That's just one idea. So let's say we come up with a different drum idea here. And we can play it through. start to lose the swing mm -hmm. that the jazz sample provides but we kind of have an idea so let's see oh just remembered something so if you right click on the bottom corner here that this is probably why I was struggling so much uh, this song I think is in triplets yeah it's in triplet fourths which honestly doesn't really like <laughs> who cares I guess but <laughs> it might help like you can change the grid to triplets so now if I put a hi-hat on every like assigned line let's see what that does nope 
I might be lying. Um, there we go. That's what I wanted. Um, so let's quantize these. I don't know why that didn't work. And then if we highlight just the hi-hats and duplicate them for the whole bar. And then... A lot of trial and error. Still learning that in music. Are you trying to match the one, two, three? Yeah, you got two, it. Three, one, two. Woo! -hoo -hoo -hoo! <laughs> and those, You're a genius. <laughs> those are a little loud, so I'll turn down the velocity on them. Dang. Have you seen the movie uh, Rush? Rush, the drum movie show. Oh, um, what's it called? What is that movie? Uh, Whiplash. Whiplash. Yeah, I've seen you it seen like so many times. Yeah, <laughs> not quite my tempo. Too. No, I know. <laughs> Don't make me start yeah. throwing symbols around here. That movie is a good crazy. Movie. Yeah. yeah. That feeling when, when, not to spoil anything, but when he breaks past his barrier mm -hmm, and, then, yeah. and, and, and he makes it past that breaking point. Yeah, no, that is. That was, yeah. is pretty. Pretty good. Yeah. And when the like just in those like, jazz is so wild, people are like, all right, fifteenth measure, four, fourth right. bar, let's pick it up, let's go, right. one, two, three, four, and so, it's like, like <laughs> <laughs> no, that whole world be like, so nervous. scares me. Yeah, yeah. like Juilliard, mm -hmm. jazz school or symphony, insane. Yeah, insane. Uh, just different aliens, yeah. different type of people, mythical people. I like the swing of this. I like being able to go at my own pace. I like this. All right, you just watched me for an hour and 20 minutes learn how to figure out how to, <laughs> yeah, re -figure out. Yeah, how to re figure out. I imagine it's a lot of relearning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Remembering something no, definitely, and, and yeah. figuring out something and then forgetting there about it completely. There was a lot completely. of that. Yeah. I think the key was finding a loop in the sample that you like and then shorting it to one of these gray measures that you pointed out. Mm -hmm. um, so when I double click on it, it shows that that entire loop using the warp feature is fit into that measure. So it should just be able to like loop seamlessly. Which makes it easier to add the to exactly and the yes, to it later, yes. right? Gotcha. Um, so we'll add a thumbnail to skip uh, an hour and 20 yeah, minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to get to the meat and potatoes, yeah. the veggies, yeah. come to an hour and 20 But you also learn how to experiment and yeah. you know really yeah, yeah, yeah. fine-tune things. So there's benefits of both. And my point about mentioning these clips is that so there's two different ideas in these scenes. Um, and if you're playing live or if you're just recording, um, you can toggle back and forth between them and Ableton is smart enough to change it on the exact beat uh, that you want it. So if we have this playing, three, four, one, two, I can trigger this one. Ooh, it'll we'll switch it up. Mm -hmm. uh. can trigger this one. And then can you trigger it and it'll record like that as exactly, well? Exactly, yeah. So let's, let's, let's do that. I imagine once you get past the first 53 learning curves, <laughs> yes. it becomes like really yes. fun. Yes, yes. And it, once you have control of the software and it's not just like giving you error messages exactly. and you yeah. can't figure out where your hat is and your your base or anything. Once you once you have that first what, 2 years? Mm -hmm. 1 year, depending on how I guess Even how just hard yeah, you like do it. the I think the play nature of it is like important. Yeah. Um and just like really, I mean that that's so easier said than done, because um, it is intimidating. Yeah. But I think having, especially like a class where like everyone's playing, everyone's trying to figure stuff something out. Like yeah, the key like this everyone's quantizing that was place. like one little gem where I was like, someone was like, oh, did you know you can do blah? And I was like, no, I didn't. That's yeah. so crazy. That would have saved me hours. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank but you then for like you me this put in those thing. hours to really understand what quantizing exactly, is doing and yeah. when to use it. And if anybody out there is feeling, like, intimidated because this stuff can have a lot of barriers to entry, 
my recommendation, my unwarranted advice would be to play around with Serato or DJing for like a year and just, or may just make playlists on Spotify, yeah. YouTube, listen to as much different music for different genres, and you'll start to see like tricks that people use with their intros, Definitely. with their bridges, yeah. and then it'll make producing a light. That's why you see DJs as producers, producers as DJs. Mm -hmm. You just break down music and you really get yeah. like an understanding of it. Definitely. Um, even if you're an MC. Just learning how to produce a little bit, yeah. I think, would help your rhyme pattern because now you could play off the triplets. Exactly, and, yeah. yeah. I think, yeah, that took me so long. To, I knew something, there's a swing element going on, but once it, once I realized that it was triplets, um, just by counting, like, two, three, two, two, two three, three, four, two, two three, three, one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three, like that alone. Like jazz still uses yeah. three, four, <laughs> two, five, and five, yeah. six. What is this? I know, yeah. Jazz. No, but this is amazing. Oh, we got a chat about oh, what is Serato? Serato. Yeah, let like me it. write that in the chat. Serato is a DJ software. It can be free. You can also pay for some more features, but to get started, you can just go from the beginning and it's basically uh, a software for you to mix music together and you can make different playlists which are called crates you can mix them you can create cues um, cue points are they're gonna take you to specific spots in the song so if you have one at the first beat that always helps if you have one when the song changes if it has like a format switch you could put a cue point there and whenever you hit that specific button it'll take you to that spot in the song which can really help you navigate through a playlist through different songs so, but the goal is when using serato when djing for a crowd is to just have a whole place of playlist of songs that flow seamlessly into and out of each other and build energy crash energy um and just keep people happy and on the dance floor not being like boo <laughs> yeah, definitely hit up alex if you're interested in just learning how songs work together bpms yeah it's a um, it's an amazing entryway gateway to getting into music yeah. production and taking it further because now you got me wanting to play with yeah. ableton yeah because this is incredible it's, yeah very powerful tool yeah um so to get to your point earlier you were asking about recording these different ideas on the fly yeah um the solo or I turn it off so what we can do is if we go back to the arrangement view you can see that this timeline is like grayed out so we're playing stuff but nothing is actually being recorded um, so if we go to the beginning we can hit record counts off twice play um, trigger this will show us what we've actually recorded um, and again the great thing about MIDI is we can extend this so you really don't have to play it for a little bit I kind of just let it play out for effect but yeah um, and then yeah we could bring back automation um, we just do the master channel which is hidden down here um, for track volume draw different points in, have it fit in. Ooh, that's the master. Mm -hmm. Nice. So just you control everything. the whole thing? Exactly. Man, that'd be, I don't think GarageBand has that tool. I think it does, well, maybe not a master channel, yeah. but. Maybe it does. 
I don't know. Yeah. It, it has the same it's, like drawing. You can do something. Yeah. yeah. I know how to do it with specific channels, but mm-hmm. I gotta find that key, the master key. Woo! I might throw that like double bass that you put in the da da makes it like yeah, keep, bouncy, it, keep yeah. it rolling. Yeah. Put that pause in it already? You know, I don't know how that got there. But no, I think that sounded really <laughs> yeah. smooth. Yeah. Woo! I think we got one with this one. Boom. Oh, our webcam has died again. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that'll be a good place to end it. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Let me throw in those uh, those rain sounds again. Wait, hold up. Uh, throw in the. Uh, are you tired uh, of the? True, 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 yeah. true, true. Let me do that. I don't know the battery. <laughs> You're good. We're we're gonna wrap up pretty soon. We're just gonna let you fade out with this beautiful music. Uh, I want to give a round of applause to Tim. Uh, regular you. decision. Uh, do you have you. a Spotify? I do. Yes. Regular YouTube? dot decision on Spotify on YouTube. Uh, SoundCloud. You heard it here, folks. Regular dot decision. YouTube. Check it out. Give a subscribe. Give a like. Uh, tune in. I think we're gonna make this monthly. Yeah. Uh, I, mean, yeah. I haven't confirmed with you yet, but <laughs> yeah. we're gonna make it. We're gonna do this. And I'm just gonna send you samples and beats. I'll bring Let's in the turntables one day. We'll do some scratches Let's to go into the beats. And who rhymes? Do you know anybody who Ooh, rhymes? Uh, I mean, you had it who for a second. <laughs> <laughs> I will put on my MF2 mask. And freestyle a little bit. Oh, uh, it's on warp. Okay. That's why it's that so kind of cool. weird. <laughs> Are you a new love? Adventure? Maybe Wait, let me give him a, a deep voice. Let me turn this. Yes. On. Yes. Oh my goodness, this is so much fun. <laughs> this is uh, Cowboy Viva. This is fit right in there. All these answers. Call one nine hundred psychic. Yeah. You're gonna need to save this and send it to me. Must be 18 or older. <laughs> it must be 18 oh, or older. Yeah. for joining Thank us for good luck me. with your finals good luck with your exams if you have any questions at all you can always set up a tech console on our webpage or just come to the ask us desk and we will help you out this is tim and alex and we are signing off see you soon space cowboy the per-